The solution to this assignment actually comes in two parts. First is building the individual sheets or visualizations, and second is compiling them into a dashboard. Let's first look at how to build those individual charts and graphs. <laughs> Hopefully you guys had a really good uh, kind of attempt at this. Some of you would have like nailed it. Some of you would have struggled. That's okay. I was probably kind of in the middle um, when I first started. So if you're doing, you know, business intelligence for the very first time and you were able to build a few things, like you got a bar chart working or something and you didn't quite know how to split it, this video will show you exactly what you're missing. And most of the time I found when I'm like teaching people, um, and they're just short of, oh man, like I was trying to build this, but I'm really struggling. I don't know what to do. It's usually they're just missing one thing, right? It's like, oh, just tweak this and then it's done. So you're probably closer than you think. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to actually rebuild every single one of these so you can see the process that I do as well um, when it comes to designing things. So sometimes I'll get a dashboard from somebody or, you know. Uh, sent to me and I have to try and figure out how it was built right or what the logic was or anything like that because then I can see kind of how they went about designing and this is the process I use so let's start with this first one okay I'm gonna do a fresh sheet okay and we're gonna kind of I'm gonna have to flick back and forth just to see this uh, the way I look at this is the first thing is that it's a column chart so we start there that's what I do. So the uh, it's a column chart and I know it's a sum of sales. So let's start with that, very easy. So I'm gonna bring sales and I'm gonna double click. So we know it's always, it's gonna automatically be a column or you can also drop it in here into rows or you can also drop it into rows up here. Now, if you accidentally got a um, bar chart going this way, it's cause you dropped it into the columns, all right? And if you have just a number, it's because you dropped it here into label and you ended up with just a number, right? To get a bar chart, we want it in rows. Great. Then what I do next is I slowly start splitting that total value into what I need. So here we can see that it's category and then ship status. All right. And I'm going to go category. I'm going to drop it into columns. All right. So that splits it that way. If you dropped it into the other one, you'll see straight away, ah, oh, not quite what I want, and you can just move it up. So this is one of the really good things with Tableau in that even if you put it in the wrong one, right, you can be like, oh, that's not quite right. Let me move this here, or let me move this here, let me move this here, let me move this here. And you can keep tweaking it until you're happy with it. There's no sort of like one-way street where once you've, ed once you've done something to it, that's it, right? It's a very fluid um, thing. So then the next thing we need is ship status. Now let's say I put ship status before category. Looks kind of similar, but not quite. You can see that the lower granularity is actually the ship status, in which our case it's category. So I simply reverse these. So now I have it down here. Now you're probably wondering this rotation thing. Uh, probably don't worry about it. It's more of a space issue. So if I go up like this, I think if I reduce it, then it starts to do that, right? Oh, not quite, actually. Not quite. So the way to do that if you do need it, and I, sorry, I didn't mention this in a previous one, you can right click and just go rotate label. I don't remember actually doing that uh, in the, in the test. So I wouldn't worry about that. Cool. So that's kind of the first part. And then we have the slices kind of going this way and you can see that it's segment. So let's go back to sheet six and I'm going to bring segment in. Okay. Now if I put segment into the columns, it's just going to split it across further. Not quite what I want. Uh, if we put it in between here, not quite what I want, not what I want. Um, I'm, I want it really in rows. So if I drop it there, you can see it's split it this way. Cool. All right. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take a single value, make sure we're on the right track. So this is 328, 380, 328, 380. Okay. So we're good. The next thing is we want to color it by segment. Okay. Now this one, ho hopefully you guys got this. We basically take segment and we simply drop it into color. That's it. So instead of um, coloring it by, you can color it by scale, you know, sum of sales, or you can color it by, you know, an actual item. So let's say I dropped category in there, it'll color this way, okay? Or I can color by ship status, okay? So you can see all the early deliveries are one color, right? So I can actually click on this and it'll show me individually, okay? So let's bring segment back in. So that's a little bit of a trick. See if you guys got that. So that is pretty much the first one built. Cool. Let's build the next one. 
So this is the bar chart. So again, same process I'm going to do. I always start with the measure, right? In this case, it's the sum of quantity. So I'm going to do a new sheet. Let's bring in sum of quantity. And I'm just going to double click. Okay, I see a bar chart. Uh, sorry, a column chart. I really want a bar chart going this way. So I want to move this up. Okay, so we have a bar chart. Now I start splitting the data, right? So it's what, 38,000 ish? I'm going to, this is basically, this total is 38,000. So we know it's simply splitting. So let's start with region. So if I take region, drop it into rows, that splits it that way. Okay, cool. And then I want ship status at the top. So we've got ship status and drop it here. Cool. And that's pretty much it except for the color. So let's go color by sum quantity and sunrise sunset color palette. So sum of quantity, I'm going to bring that back in and drop it into color. So the standard color is blue. We can go into color, edit colors, and pick sunrise, sunsets. Here it is here. And go OK. So that's the coloring. And that's how you do the second one. OK, pretty easy. So we're breezing through it now. Let's do a new sheet again. And let's tackle the line chart. So this one, let's see if you remember the running total. So we have the running total profit versus month of order date. Again, I always start with the measure. So let's do the total profit first. So profit, double click. Cool. All right, that's the first one. And then we want to see this at a month granularity. Now here is kind of the trick. Is it discrete or continuous? Now let's say I didn't know. You can pick one, and if it doesn't look right, pick the other one, right? And over uh, as you experience it and start to use it more and more, you start to see, oh, right, those are the differences. So if I go into sheet eight and I simply double click order date, not quite what I want, right? You may be fooled into thinking it is, but actually you see all these little dots, right? That's the granularity. There's actually months in there, right? Month nodes, you can see here, and we can see month of order date. So why don't we switch it to month? Okay, so if I go into here and go month, is that right? Well, no, not really, because this is um, only combining the month for every year. So this January is the sum of January across all the years. So how do I know this? Um, just as a quick test, if I do a bar chart here and I drop year into this, it's actually the combination of multiple Januaries. It's not what we want, okay? So we know this isn't right. Okay, let's go back a step. Well, what if I just increase the granularity of year? Will that do it? Well, no, because now it's splitting it up, right? So from here, from your experience, you're like, it's probably not a discrete representation. It's most likely continuous. So let's close this back up. And I'm going to switch this now to continuous. So you've got these ones here as the continuous. Let's start with year. So not quite. It's missing all the granularity in between. Let's switch it to month. Okay, this is looking a lot better because now I can see the individual months, but it's a jagged line instead of a, you know, kind of a straight line. So that is because it is a running total. So what we do is here on the measure, we go right click, quick table, running total. And there you have it. That's your running total at a month granularity. Cool. Now the very last one is the pie chart. Now I wonder how many people got this. I hated pie charts when I started. So let's go ahead and give this a go. So it's a segment and sum of profit. So that's really all we need at the beginning. So let's do a new sheet. I'm going to bring in sum of profit. So just double click and we're going to bring in segment. So you remember when we were building pie charts, you really only need two things at a minimum, one measure and one dimension. So this is our measure. And this is our dimension. So from here, we go click to uh, show me and click this button right here. And there you have your pie chart. The next thing we do is we go to the view and we go entire view. That is because, uh, just to remind you, if we start putting labels in, sometimes they overlap and it looks like Tableau's made a mistake. It's It hasn't made a mistake. Um, what it's doing is whenever your labels get too close to one another, only one will display so it doesn't look super ugly. So what I do is I always put it into entire view so I have massive space for my labels, right? So I know exactly what it's going to look like. Cool. Now we're going to add those labels. So let's go back to dashboard one. You can see there's three 
label type. So you've got the home office, which is the segment. Then you've got the actual sum of the profit and then the percent um, that it that it makes up of the pie. Okay, so let's build that one by one. First, I'm going to bring in segment into the label. Cool. Then I'm going to bring in the profit again. Cool. Now, some of you are going to be like, okay, cool, I got the profit. Now I want to add the percent. If you try and add profit in the label again, nothing happens. And you're probably going, well, I think my Tableau just crapped itself. Well, no, it hasn't. The reason that happens is you've already got it in here. So Tableau actually thinks you're making a mistake. It's like, oh, that they didn't really mean to add that, right? They made a mistake. So what you actually have to do is once you've brought that in, you have to convert this one to a percent of total. So I go um, quick table calculation. I'm going to move this up a little bit just because of the view so you can see what I'm doing. So we're going to go here, quick table calculation, and then percent of total. And that's going to convert those ones to a percentage. Bring that back and now you can add sum of profit again because if you just add it as a normal sum of profit this one and this one are no longer the same this one is actually the percent of sum of profit this is sum of profit so tableau now goes okay they're different they're adding sum of profit again for the first time so i can bring that in and now i have the value so some of you may be tricked by that don't worry um, the next thing is we're going to style it so we click on the label here and the three dots. From here, we're gonna rearrange this a little bit. So I tend to just highlight and then click and drag. Like so, press enter. Uh, let's make this, I think size 11 or something, bold. Profit's okay. We put a bracket here and then we highlight this in red, like so. And then the whole thing just center justified. Okay, let's do a little preview, and that's what we want it to look like. I tend to actually make every single pie chart I ever make look like this. Um, I tend to get rid of actually the second, uh, the two decimal places here and just make it a round number based pretty much on what I'm building, just to make it a little bit easier to read. So we go OK, and there we have the pie chart. So that's how you build each of the, uh, each of the individual components. Hope you guys really enjoyed this one, and I will see you at the next video.